Speaking Mom. of, hello everyone. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Come on. Yes, okay. it is Saturday night. It's, Saturday night. Yeah. And we've got a trio, but it's an unusual trio, not our, our normal three. Evan's back. <laughs> and Evan is unusual. <laughs> I always have a different haircut every time I come yeah. back. <laughs> We're all a bit unusual. Let, let, let's be honest there. Um, cool. So apologies for the lateness on starting everything here. Um, I s- kicked off re-watching The Experience of Harvey Sees Mia and forgot that's like a nine-hour film. Um, <laughs> Two hours and 40 minutes. Yeah, 41 it's minutes. Long. Yeah, it's yeah. forever. It, it is well, a long I could have had more if they... Yeah, yeah. No, I couldn't take more. <laughs> oh, I, I, I would take more of that any, any oh. day. I just kept thinking of the pros and cons of time travel. I mean, mm-hmm. oh, time travel. Mm-hmm. What about the pros and cons of like somebody who can make giant time quakes? Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> no es bueno. Bit of, bit of a problem. The ripple Some, mm-hmm. sometimes causes issues. I did see a live action uh, Korean uh, mm. TV series uh, recently called Sisyphus that mm. dealt with time travel. Uh, oh. A guy who creates a uh, quantum time teleportation system mm. and inadvertently causes like. World War Three. It, it okay. was great. It was great. It had me on the edge of my seat. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> it inadvertently causes World War Three. Wow. <laughs> hasn't that happened? Let's be honest. Whoops. <laughs> kind of the, the, the uh, you know, it's the, kind of how that works. I just wanted to go back and make my electric bill not late, so I didn't have to pay the fee, and I started World War Three. Ah, that, that was one of the yeah, things. Uh, yeah. People people would try to come back because they had regrets and they wanted to do something about their regrets, but. It, there's a whole lot to it. It's, yeah. it's definitely it's yeah. that worth, easy. worth seeing. But it was all in Korean. So oh, okay. I had to do the subtitle thing. So mm-hmm. oh, being awake enough to read the subtitles <laughs> is always good. Um, that, I can't that's, walk that's, off yeah. into the kitchen and grab a drink mm-hmm. and listen to what's going on. I kind of like pause, mm-hmm. run over, get a drink, come back. <laughs> so yeah, so let's talk. Let's dig in and talk about the disappearance of Harley Susan Mia. I'm going to grab it. Go for it. Um, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. It is quite the movie. Um, yes, it is. John, what is what is your exposure to Harvey Susamia before this film? Well, when Harvey came out and everybody was doing the dance and everything else was, was going gangbusters, I watched it. I adored the TV series. I thought it was great. And then when this film came out, I watched it, and my memory of it was, yeah, it's all the franchise that I love. Mm-hmm. Then I watched it again. Okay. Okay. And, and yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, interesting second take. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh, All right. Stand up as well the second time around. Hmm. What got me the the second watching? The first watching was because I was riding the high of the Haruhi thing. So it was just like, yay, more content that has Haruhi. This is awesome. I'm, this is super. And then watching it now that the years have settled in, it's just like I had forgotten what a slog like so many moments in the film are, where it's just a slow progression. I, I, I get that. But I'm so many years away from the Harley fandom mm-hmm. now that it's just like trying to watch it. And I watched it yesterday after I woke up. From mm-hmm. the uh, from the COVID vaccine, call. Uh, that might be a factor. <laughs> and I was just kind of like everything aches, like mm. knees, hips, joints, everything hurts. So I'm sitting, trying to watch this, trying to sit still, read the subtitles, and I'm like, oh, I gotta pause this. I gotta get up. I gotta move around. And I'm like, I'm just not riveted into this film like I was. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that you know what I mean. So that's that's kind of colored things going forward because it's like sure. I started to try and watch Yuki Nagato, her like spin-off part that talks about, oh, yeah. you know, her experience as an alien android. <laughs> I couldn't even start watching that because I've got I've sort of gone so far away from Harley. Yeah. <laughs> like okay. dang, okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, um that's an interesting issue with the I don't have a solution for the echo at the moment. So many um, things going on here. Yeah. Um this unfortunately is where... I don't yeah unfortunately okay. I don't know a great way of fixing the Echo without putting us both on um, headphones. headphones. I don't really have a split or anything here. Uh, we're not really set up for that. So um, 
I don't have a solution at the moment. Uh, let me think huh. for a little bit. I could sit in the other room and dial in. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have the audio coming back. Yeah, the that's, speakers that's always that one of the tricky so, things. Yeah. Had I had foresight. Um, yeah, um, I, I might have You have a, a headphone a, DA, but not here. Yeah. So always somewhere else. Um, well, I might have to, on my end, turn off the house beat dance party oh, okay, setting that I have. <laughs> Actually, give me one Word. second. I, I may have like a, um, a head thing. A head thing. A head thing. I had one of... Yeah, exactly. This is going to be a disturbing moment where, where Ed loses his mind and head. Oh, no! You know, years ago when I was in... Oh, okay. When I was in uh, junior high, I remember getting a comic book of all sorts of weird sci-fi stories. And there was a story about a kid who was growing up in this boarding school. Uh, you know, nobody had parents. And the kids who were playing... It's called around, an orphanage, Evan. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then one of the kids pu pulled his head off and put it on the other kid's body. And a lot of them were androids. And they were like, yeah, we could do this. And this is cool. Ooh. And then they tried it with this one kid and pop, blood everywhere. He was the real earthling. <laughs> so, oh, jeez. In that junior high, I was like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. It's like Alfred Hitchcock and, and, and yeah. Super Allen Poe mixed together better, you know. <laughs> Wow. Inside yeah, come on. We'll just take your head off. No, don't. I'm real. Yeah. <laughs> Is it supposed to hurt like this? <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to not. Don't go that way. I wish I knew what the, the, the name of the comic was, but it was a bunch of little short sci-fi twisted tales stories, and it was really well done. If I recall, I think it was it called Twisted Tales? Baxter Paper, which I don't think Twisted Tales was. Hmm. It, it was. I think it was one of the independent things because they actually showed blood in it, and I think for like the comic codes of America, you know, whatever. Oh, so sort of like, they, dark, was it Dark Horse Comics that it, did, uh, a, did a lot of graphic thing, novels but, and stuff? Uh, I, I don't remember if Dark Horse was, uh, when, when did Dark Horse come around? Oh, jeez. 90s? 90s, 90s? Yeah. oh, it may have been yeah, yeah. before then. I, no. I have a few, a few cycles on the uh, solar system here. <laughs> Just a couple. Just a couple. You know? You're just a babe by galactic orbit. Exactly. I mean, when you're a time traveler, you don't keep track of these things. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Is that it? Hmm. Organium. Testing, testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Hello, my baby. Hello, my I'm sweetheart. Hello, my girl. drag time gal. <laughs> That's not it. I have the problem now. Oh, you're doing a wireless thing. Of It's a Bluetooth device. But I have no this idea what it's right called. Here, I have no Bluetooth idea Harada or whatever it's, whatever the so, Viking finding the guy was. Yeah. Uh, I have a device I could search for what's in the area. Uh, no, it's okay. I, that's about, I don't know which the, the name of this one, so I don't know which one to connect to. Um, yeah. well, try that one again. It's not named Fred. It's definitely trying to pair. Steve, Joe, Bob. Um, I've always had problems with that. Um, I've always had trouble with Bluetooth until, yeah. like, I use it on a regular basis. Then I can mm -hmm. get it to pair because I figure out the quirks of which yeah. other Bluetooth devices. Mm. Um, nope. Yeah, I have a no, okay. speaker that does that kind of thing where it's mm. like some days it picks right up on Bluetooth and other days mm. it's like, who? What do you want? <laughs> yep. What's going on over here? <laughs> yep. um, yeah, Harald Bluetooth. That's, that's, that, is the, that is the person. So apologies for the Echo. We're just going to have to deal with that tonight. How bad is the Echo? Echo. Yeah. Echo. Exactly. What? 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 Uh, oh, so it says the echo is gone now. So, okay, cool, Thank perfect. You. Um, echo went away. <laughs> awesome. Zoom figured itself out. Echo be gone. Now, be now gone. pinch hitting, 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 hitting. Manny Moto. And now, okay. <laughs> We're going to cut all that out. We're gonna move. <laughs> um, so, I actually, um, so this is, I think, my third time watching the movie. Um, wow. Original version, and then with friends, and then this time. And I actually liked it more this time around. I, I really? found a lot more. Um, okay. I completely agree it's a slow movie. It's very slow paced. I very... did shout at the screen a few times for, for actors, uh, for, for characters to do things. Yeah. <laughs> Just do it! <laughs> yeah. Hit the button! Exactly. Shoot the girl! <laughs> Stop grabbing people and shaking them and yelling incomprehensible crap at them. <laughs> like... Security! In, Security! In fairness, the thing I, as, as I was watching this, I, I realized, you know, he was having a psychotic break. Basically. Oh, you know? yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 as much as these characters are in this sort of weird situation, he's 
he's lived his whole life, if you will, with this scenario, and now it's all been worked around and rewired, and so he can't just let that go. You know, he can't just just uh, say, oh, well, this is the new world, whatever. Right. Um, but you also don't have to go around shaking people and yelling at them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, because well, there, there, there are things. plenty of times in the series mm-hmm. where just insanity erupts, because mm-hmm. Haruhi just does that. Right, <laughs> he yeah. He causes exactly. insanity. And Kion is the one who is the stable, sort of grounded mm-hmm. human out of all of the wacky cast of aliens yeah. and others. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this, you really, he really comes unglued. Absolutely. this much faster than, like, the, the insanity, like, you see in The Endless Eight. Right. Like, his insanity grows by the time he hits the 15,000th cycle, which right. means he was relatively, like, mm-hmm. glued together for 14 and change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... yeah. Well, and I would argue that might, in this case, be because of two things. One is because um, the Endless Eight was at least familiar. Um, he was right. he was going through this thing. This was a complete change of things. But also because I think this is getting as close as the series has ever gotten to what's actually going on. And um, uh, Kion actually addressing his his role in all of this. Right. Um, and not just that, but, well, there's a thing at the end, and this is going to be very spoiler heavy, that indicates what's actually going on in this franchise. Um, so I, I think he's he's touching on that now in, in a new way, and that's kind of what, what driven him to be very, a, lot, a lot more frantic. Because he is definitely just freaking out. Yeah. Um, Which, I mean, the thing that you ne- the ship you never get to sail mm-hmm. in the series is the Kion... Haruhi ship. Right. That's the ship you never get to have. Mm -hmm. You get his obsession with Asahina. Yep. You know, with her being who she is and her Mm. figure. (laughs) And his, like, ooh, she's just so cute. Yeah. And in this, you kind of, you finally kind of have the realization and the expression of the fact that Haruhi is such a central figure to his life. Mm. And it's not as him acting as the key to keep her from destroying the world. Right. Right. It's he genuinely loves Harley. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, he genuinely misses her company, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's just—it's so interesting. You know how he has to make a choice of a normal world where Haruhi can still do the funky club thing mm-hmm. and be a normal person, yeah. and then the world wherein Haruhi is God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Maybe. I'm surprised at the choice he makes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing. Like, when you see the regular versions of these characters, um, it's so it was so fascinating to me jumping in and seeing um, the um, you know, what I always call the, the disappearance you know, version of Yuki, because you're like, yeah. oh, it's Yuki. Okay. Oh, oh no! Like, she's not just some quiet girl. She is a painfully shy, like yep. almost unable to relate to other people kind of a shy person. Um, she's a kind of, not quite a broken person, but she's definitely got, you know, social anxiety to a, an end oh, degree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And it's... And you see that and you realize, oh, wow, this version of her is actually pathetic. And I mean that in the kind of dictionary sense of you feel very bad for her. Right. Um, and I think it's one of the, re- and then you see the Mikuru of this version, and she has kind of a normal life, and it's all, you know, fine, and so forth. Uh, you see the Haruhi, um, you know, version of, of this universe, um, and she is, and I'll see if I can find, yeah, there we go, um, and when we first see her, lest we forget, um, she's kind of miserable. She's just living her life. But she's just, you know, something's wrong. Something's not yeah. the way it should be. And it is encountering Kion and the wrench that he throws into his, uh, his reality that uh, completely changes that. Um, well, even for her misery, that the fact that she's still with Koizumi mm-hmm. and hanging out, talking, and interacting, and that... Uh, Kion's friend from class who's like, oh yeah, I went to middle school with her. She yeah. was completely tapped out whacked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
You know what I mean? Haruhi is a duller version mm -hmm. of the Haruhi that Kyo knows in his world, right. but she <laughs> still has that same fire. Right. Like once, Absolutely. once you get her, you know, stop being in the elitist school moment, mm -hmm. and you sort of light that little spark, it's like, wow, <laughs> you know, that's so interesting. Kyon could have that Haruhi. Mm -hmm. He could have right. the interaction with that Haruhi, and she's committed to, yes, let's do this club thing you talked about. This is mm -hmm. awesome. We'll investigate cool stuff. It's like, wow, you could have that. And not have to worry about closed spaces, not have to worry about these spectral beings wiping out half the city. Right. <laughs> and you, know, you could have normal stuff, but right. still just the excitement. That's right. just, you but, know? And I, I think one of his points is that even that excitement would be a copy. You know, it wouldn't be the real thing, it would be running around and imitating. Right, what it was in in his his universe. But um, think how safe it would be. <laughs> he enjoys the chaos. He okay. really enjoys we talked the about chaos. this before, John. <laughs> he enjoys the chaos. It, it definitely would be safer, right. and yeah. he'd have another potential uh, love interest or mm -hmm. relationship. But it's not as exciting mm -hmm. as having right. real time traveling Esper. Which which he points out that yeah. you know it's just does it lacks that certain thing and it's like it's so interesting to see mm -hmm. you know this world even though yuki is the one that brings about the time quake mm -hmm. no spoilers <laughs> yeah. sorry. spoilers sorry. Spoiler. Yeah. Uh, spoiler sorry mm -hmm. um it really feeds into Kion's constant during the series oh, of yeah. just like, oh my god, why can't she stop doing these things? <laughs> this is just, uh, what, what's up with you people? Why are you a future person? Why are you an Esper? What the hell well, is happening? And, and, this could, and let's, let's just jump to it. Um, this movie is where we finally kind of get the, the big answer, in my opinion, to what's actually going on. Because we, um, uh, Kion actually finally does a thing um, in the very end. Um, he's talking to Yuki and they're going over all this and he looks down and he says her name which means snow yep. and it begins to snow Snow. Yeah. because Haruhi isn't the god of this universe <laughs> Kion is the god of this universe <laughs> and it isn't the fact that Haruhi is spinning all this and making all this happen Kion wants adventure he wants you know, he wants aliens to exist. He wants time travelers to exist. That's why the whole opening monologue is about him saying, I've grown up, you know, I've, I've gone past all that stuff. You know, I, I don't believe in any of that anymore. And it's kind of, a, it's kind of unfortunate that I don't believe in anything anymore. And it's why I think the pocket world isn't what he, he's after. Because it's just normal life again, just with interesting people. But right. you don't actually have real time travelers and espers running around. Um... And so, yeah, I mean, he, I, I think the, 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 the point they're driving here is that Kion is, Kion wants the craziness deep down. This blew my mind when he said, it's not Haruhi who's in control, <laughs> it's Kion. Mm -hmm. that, that, I, I started looking at it in a different light. I was like, what? No? Yeah? Well, yeah. <laughs> and it really, it, it, was, it was very thought-provoking hearing that because I hadn't thought about it from that perspective mm. and and when I think about it now it's he he is the mover and motivator of a lot yeah. of these things he yep. can react or not react and, and things will or will not happen and one, one of the things that I found really appealing is we're seeing it and hearing it from his internal monologue mm -hmm. right and 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 that it was a very different twist than a lot of things so not knowing uh, other characters' inner monologues, I didn't really feel that I had as good a grasp on what their 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 real integration into this was, mm -hmm. right? As well as I did Kion. So, well, that you, was... you also have the other interpretation. If mm -hmm. I recall correctly, I'm I I did not pay, pay this close attention. Yeah. When Kion wakes up, he talks to Koizumi. And he talks right. to, to um, uh, everyone else. They don't mention time traveling or espers or anything like that. Mm. They're just, you know, talking about their normal life. <laughs> it could be that Kion is in a normal world. He hit his head. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> He's woken up. 
and everything's back to normal. But no one's a time traveler or esper in this room. All a dream. It, it was, was all, all a dream. This great uh, <laughs> at least they weren't clapping for him when right, he said yeah, yeah, yeah. that. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> well, I, I think it's that's an interesting analysis of Kion being being the one that's in control of the world because that gives a lot of good reasoning for why the program doesn't have Haruhi as the actuator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah why it's Kion who's the actuator for that mm-hmm. restore program. Yep. He mm-hmm. controls whether there is Aspers mm-hmm. and aliens yep. and time travel. Mm-hmm. Because if he doesn't, if he you know actively chooses to not have that be, then they don't. They don't exist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I agree, though. I would love to know. I would love to have the background of what Koizumi and Haruhi, what is their internal dialogue in their, in their yeah. world when they meet with Kion. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, is there is she as wacky as has been indicated mm-hmm. by Kion's friend? Oh, in middle school, she was nuts. Yeah. Is she still kind of wacky? Mm-hmm. Or is she just totally like normal, not dead inside, but yeah. normal and just sort of dialed into the fact she's a high school student yep. and she has to represent the school and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was yeah. middle school phase. Mm-hmm. I was right. excitable. Yeah. Now I'm Shunibyo, eighth manner. grade syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was just thinking that. Mm. I, I am the, the dark room. flame master. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Put it away. <laughs> I just watched that recently, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Love, right. delusion, and other things, mm-hmm. Shunibyo. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Um, it's it's one of the interesting things about the movie is that it does throw a lot of questions onto just what this whole thing is, um, and the fact that I think Haruhi in particular is um, if if you kind of you know bounce this around, you realize all Haruhi does is just kind of push people. <laughs> um, you know, uh, she, she uh, she's in, uh, an actuator in Costumes! a different sense, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No! Um, you know, she she is the um, the extrovert to end all extroverts in some yeah. ways, um, and that's kind of her superpower. Um, um, whereas, um, and it, it it gets to this question of you know why Kion, right? Like why is mm-hmm. Kion the one to center Haruhi? Why is he in the middle of all of this? Um, and I think it's it's because again, depending on how you you interpret it, either um, Haruhi needs a center. Um, right. You know, she she needs somebody to pull her, her down. Grounding. Yeah. Grounding. O- or he's projecting onto <laughs> her basically, you know, his his power and his his ability. Mm. Um, or again, maybe he's just all making it up. Like maybe, he maybe created just... he created this monster. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the thing that I would I would I would love to dig into because I, and again I, I haven't analyzed it this this deeply, but I you know it it is worth noting that every time um, Kion has one of these crazy episodes, somebody talks to him about something, he's alone with a person. You know, um, he, mm-hmm. he goes off with Kozumi, and Kozumi talks about all this crazy stuff. It is possible that Kion is again just kind of living this life, and he is inserting all of these things in his mind. He is making up the fact that Koizumi is an Esper, and that Yuki is an alien, and all that stuff, um, right. and that um, um, he's just part of this you know crazy club with this wacky girl, wacky characters, and so forth. Um, you, you could you could potentially you know interpret it that way as well. I think. Um, but let's talk about Yuki for a minute in this because Yuki is definitely the kind of the, the the tragic character in this movie. I would say because yeah. um, they, they they talk about this in season two about how over the course of the endless eight she was definitely getting worn down by all yeah. that. Under well, she, she said it was fifteen thousand cycles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and Kion only figured it out, you know, slowly but surely. And it's like Yuki was completely aware of yeah. all of the cycles and was tracking it, and just uh, yeah, like, wow, yeah. there's nothing like living eternally. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, um, and that's kind of the the thing about it is it's kind of is it's like okay, you know, is he ever going to break out of this? Like, there's the, who knows. Um, and when you find out that Yuki is kind of the one who has driven all of this and the fact that she has again kind of spoilers kind of kind of it, not to get too too deep here but she kind of commits suicide she rewrites the world so she doesn't exist in the way she did before right and she's now just this regular girl um 
and I like her as both, and it yeah. tears me. I'm like, I still want to see her have feelings and emotions, but I don't want oh, to lose her right. as, you know. Well, and that's the thing they talk about, you know, the ab- after so many cycles, aberrations occur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, Yuki's experience, holy. I, I, I really <laughs> like <laughs> that All character. Right. The, 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 this is, this is the, the manga of the experience of Yuki-chan. Oh, boy. Um, and I, I bought it and read it all the way through. So, yes, I'm a fan wow. of the character. <laughs> that Damn. Approach. So, and what this is, basically, this is a... Brent's a Yuki fanboy. Yeah, nice. Much. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I liked Yuki as a character um, and um, as a force in the show. Like, I really enjoyed her. Right. But it was actually this movie that made me go, oh, she's the one. Like, she, she's the center, she, you know... If um, Keanu's going to pick somebody, he should pick her. Because she's the one who suffered the most, really. Right. Um, and she's the one who kind of needs somebody, if you will. So if those, uh, for those curious, this is the disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan. It is a um, spin-off um, set in the disappearance world where everybody is a normal person. Um, and it's just telling this, th- that story where she starts to date Keanu. Basically. Wow! <laughs> um, and so, which I mean, you kind of got that sense when she handed Kion the mm-hmm. the application for the literature. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. you know, oh. and it's just like she's which, so shy and she's so cute about it. Where it's just yeah. like Yuki's kind of adorable. Which, which is where you, where you realize and this is what would made it harder for me watching the second time when you realize that oh, she's in love with Kion. Like she she's yeah. she's deep in love with Kion, which is why when he walks in. She, she reacts the way she does. She's not just nervous. She's like, oh, my gosh, my crush has just walked in. What do I do? Oh, he's here. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, and then... Finally, all that doujinshi stuff <laughs> I've read. Exactly. It's <laughs> really real. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you, we laugh, but she did have to clear off her computer before he would walk in. Like, oh, then, yeah. <laughs> um, like, what was she doing? Yeah. Um, and then... Um, and then again, like she invites him to her apartment alone. Yeah. Bold move for such a timid girl. Very much so. Yeah, no joke. Um, Which I mean, even Kion says that it's like, yeah. wow, she, you know, this is kind of an unusual thing. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes, it is. And then crazy murder girl comes over, bringing <laughs> bringing hot pot. I like, love. <laughs> oh my! Love how they use Ryoko both all three of the times, really. <laughs> Um, the, yeah. the slow mo introduction where she's just walking in and you start seeing, you're like, oh no, no, Step. no, 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 Step. no. Step. I, was, I thought initially it was going to be Asahina, like the yeah. first time I saw the film. I'm like, yeah. okay, this is, this is, there's something, things are different. So maybe this is like Asahina and like her hair is different. And then she like comes up, I'm like, oh crap. I'm like, I'm like, oh no, it's not. And it's, and it's funny watching the second time when you, you see it through the eyes of everybody else looking at Kion, where you know, his classmate comes in and he goes, oh, I can't, I can't. you know, it's like, chill, dude. Yeah, they're like, what is up with you? <laughs> um, and then the second time when she shows up in Yuki's apartment and is like, I came up with, came over with soup, which is clearly not here to murder you. Um, <laughs> it's uh, just filled with Drano. Have some. Exactly. <laughs> well, and then she says, you know, she, she you know, the, the first words out of her mouth when she sits down is, you know, this is just the way things are. You should get used to it. Mm. And it's like, oh. Oh. Okay. Mm. And, you know, the conversation goes in other directions. Um, and then, of course, she shows up at the end. Um, when you realize, yeah. <laughs> when you realize she is not quite as innocent as you might think. Um, she's gone all Higarashi. She's gone all yes. <laughs> <laughs> Higurashi, Elvin Lead, just the whole whole nine yards. Yeah. Uh, very Higurashi school days. Um, but yeah, no, and what's... Mira, Mira Nikki. Yes, there we go. Um, actually, spot on. Um, yeah. And, and, again, and, and that's where you realize, again, because she says, like right there, this is what you wanted, which means she knows, right? It's not yeah. just, we, we got rebooted. This, no, like she's she aware. Um, yeah, and that, that's, <laughs> oh, that's a moment. Well, it broke my heart when yeah. when when the application was returned. Oh. I was like, "What are you doing? Yeah. That's yeah. unnecessary! Don't do so, don't break that girl's heart by giving back oh. the application." 
Yeah, just put it in your pocket, damn it. Like you did, like the bookmark. Just keep it in your pocket. Just shut up. Yeah. yeah. It's a great example of unintended consequences where he's mm. he's basically saying, you know, Yuki, you know, um, he, he's basically doing it for the other Yuki. He's saying, this is me crossing the Rubicon of saying, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go to this other direction. Yeah, then right. you realize how she takes it. And you're like, oh. Like, oh. you know, when she reaches out and can't take it the first time yeah she misses it, oh, like, oh. It's just, oh, it's mm. terrible um, and, and again that's, that's where you get into that sort of crippling social anxiety where you realize mm. that that's not what Nagato really wants out of herself that, right. that's not the version of herself that she's really wanting it's just the version of her she would be in this situation yeah. oh, but excuse me um Especially when you see a girl have the courage to move forward in things and not leave everything mm-hmm. to the guy to yeah drop yeah and absolutely yeah um, well she left everything to kill him by himself he <laughs> could he's having a deep psychological break <laughs> like, he's not really very you know good at trying to handle this crap <laughs> also not the cleverest human on the face of the earth let's just be honest no. you know. Took him a long time to kind of connect all the pieces of what's going on here. Um, After freaking out and yelling at a number yes. of people. <laughs> uh, uh, um, how he didn't end up, and they even pointed out, they're like, how do you not end up in the school council's office? Yeah, Somebody yeah, said yeah, that yeah. in there. It's like, yeah, I'm kind Somebody, of surprised that too. <laughs> so, like, some of these kids are bound to shout for security. <laughs> I mean, I can't. Yeah. It's like, good night when you're like, Accosting Asahina in the hallway, yeah. and like you know me, you know what's going on. She's like, ah, "What? <laughs> like, poor girl." <laughs> yeah, you can get away with a lot while you're inside the building. When you're outside the building, apparently, mm. you know, with, uh, uh, <laughs> Kyo and Hai. Oh yeah, um, yeah. The, the guy who ran out. Which, by the way, again to sort of connect all the dots here. Um, note that when um, um, uh, Tanizuki, I think. Um, Kion's friend, the guy who's boasting the entire time. Right. Um, before all this happens, the girl he was going to be with was from Kion mm. High. Mm. Yeah, first year at Kion first High. Year, yeah, so that, that may be where Kion got the idea to sort of do the whole rewrite to go do something. That's where that came mm-hmm. in. Yeah. yeah. Um, Planting little seeds. So one, of the, one of the things that I, I appreciate about the movie is how tightly interwoven it is. Um, all the different little pieces that kind of combine and, and plug together. Mm-hmm. Of where like there's a lot of lines in this movie that actually kind of get to the themes of the movie, um, right. where you know Kion's talking about you know what should I do you know um, should I accept what's in front of me and um, uh, various other like, little lines just sort of woven in to to talk about this 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 theme um, and it's one of the things that kind of impresses me so much about the movie is you know that whole big finale not that. Um, I was going to say, him talking to Shami-san and being like, yeah. okay, talk. I told you not to talk, but talk. Well, this is a world where cats don't talk. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, that that's true. Funny. <laughs> um, Meow. Put your <laughs> left paw in my hand if I say, if yes or no. Exactly. Um, which is also particularly funny because um, um, it's, 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 one of the other interesting things about this, this movie is that there are a lot of references to little things that were only in that were referenced in the anime. So right. in the opening credit sequence, you see him with the reindeer hat on. Yeah. That's the only time you ever see that until this movie. <laughs> so when they walk in, it's like, oh, it's, oh the reindeer hat, oh, you know. So it's, it's all these little, little jokes and things. Um, and then flash, flashing back to obviously, you know, the, the God knows and all that stuff. Um, but what's fascinating is, is how this really gets to something that I think a lot of fans talk about. And a lot of um, um, is kind of a lot of the, the, the discussion of all this of, of this show is why does Kion have such a stick up stick up his butt the entire time, <laughs> right? Um, like he is constantly complaining about this. Like what's yeah. his deal? Um, and what he finally gets to at the end of this in his I would argue sort of Shinji Evangelion moment where he's arguing <laughs> with himself, right? Yeah. Um, quite literally. Um, he kind yeah, of like did, this scene where he's stepping on his own head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> Beating um, himself up over the issue. Quite, yeah, yes, he was. It, it, literally. It, 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 very <laughs> symbolic. Because um, it does get to the point where it's like, no, 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 actually, like, you are enjoying this. There's some part of you that's enjoying all these crazy adventures. You just don't want to admit it to yourself. And it's also a very kind of postmodern thing. Right, like, what do people talk? You know, complain about that the modern generation—they're all sarcastic the entire time. They can't enjoy themselves. 
you know, you can't experience real joy because everything has to be, you know, sarcastic quip. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's getting to the fact that, you know, uh, kind of addressing that aspect of, of, uh, of modern um, approaches to things, fairly or unfairly, right. um, that, you know, it, this is fun. Like, like it, it is cool to go on these weird adventures, even if it doesn't feel like it at the time. Yeah, the enclosed space, the end of the universe, the whole damn thing. Yeah. But it's still fun. Exactly. Like, uh, sure. But I, and I think that's where, you know, it's the sort of double-edged sword for Yuki is the fact that yeah. she's – the aberrations are building. Yeah. And her affection, even as the android self, mm-hmm. her affection for Kion, it's like this – her time quake achieves both ends. Mm-hmm. It's like the aberration is acknowledged and she gains the emotional state of a real – girl yeah mm-hmm. and it gives kyon that out mm-hmm. yes. there isn't crap to complain about there's mm-hmm. not like oh i'm you know i'm so put upon i you know <laughs> i have to keep haruhi in check all the time yeah. and i have to be secret oh, about it i can't tell her oh. <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. and it's like it gives it gives those two characters the things that they want and kyon is the one who really says no yeah and it's yeah. like absolutely Yuki, I don't think Yuki was going to say no. You know what I mean? Oh, That's yeah. why she did this. Right. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Yeah. It was, it was, um, I, I, can, I can really relate. I mean, it, it, most people probably can. Uh, being on the horns of a dilemma, do I stay in what's comfortable mm-hmm. and easy, or do I go with what's exciting but unpredictable exactly. and right. chaotic? Mm-hmm. And if I'm torn on that as well as you know, different halves of, of my heart where I'm going, yeah. but my head's going the other way. How do you reconcile this schism of what you really want and what you really think you should go for? Right. And uh, that's the cognitive dissonance. Is the Absolutely. <laughs> it, it's the, the, you know, dilemma I think we, we all face, I, like you're saying all the time, is, um, you know, I have a choice between the exciting and the safe, and those are not like, you know, it's not like you should do one or the other all the time. Right. Um, you can have a combination of the two in some yeah, respects. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, <laughs> the, the third way. Um, but, but facing that thing that sometimes, you know, the right thing is not the easy thing or the comfortable thing. Right. Um, uh, and, and kind of dealing with that in, in still a very wacky and Haruhi way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absurd time travel and things being thrown on top of each other. And yeah. now I'm viewing myself in the past, <laughs> experiencing a thing. And I have to remember a thing for the future to tell myself when I come in the back past. here to the past. <laughs> to, like, oh. to yeah, I love that fact about the film. And I had forgotten entirely <laughs> about it. Where when, this, when Haruhi says this is the second time I met you. Or that yeah. I met you twice before. Yeah. And it's just like he himself had forgotten about him yelling down the road. When you meet John Smith, he's going to shake the world. And it's just like he. How are you wrapping your head around the fact that you have solved this, Mm. but you have not solved it? Right. Because the things that you forgot, now you have to remember again because it's going to happen again. It's like the endless eight all over. You're going to do this at some point again. Again, <laughs> and have to do this all in the, in the format. I'm like, oh, no wonder why you kind of flip it out. <laughs> and you get amazing things like, you know, season one, what, four episodes in or three episodes in, Kion tells Yuki, hey, you look better without glasses. And then she comes in without glasses, and now we know where those glasses went. Right? That wasn't just she decided not to wear glasses, right. she turned them into this thing. And that, that was the whole plot point. They yeah. didn't even mention. <laughs> um, that then gets turned into this whole thing. It's like, oh my gosh. A I giant w- hypodermic needle. No, <laughs> let's go with something a little less like that. How about a gun? gun. <laughs> Grasshopper of men in black. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a needle gun. Go for it. Sure. <laughs> then he just points it at Yuki. It's like, good. Good. Way to defuse the situation. Congratulations. A shy, confused girl at night <laughs> <laughs> under a street lamp outside of an, an, an empty school and you yeah. point something gun-like at her. Oh, I'm sure that's going to go well. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. At that moment, I really had this sort of, you know, feeling of like a, a, just a stabbing pain in my side that this wasn't going to go well. Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah. Um, speaking of pain. Pain. yeah. Um Yeah. Mm. Another thing that again, I, I really appreciate about this this movie that it, it does so well. Um, 
is that you know they have that face off, mm-hmm. and then you get Kion realizing what's going on, realizing Yuki's damage, you know w- why emotionally she's doing all of this, and so you experience this catharsis. And again, we are three quarters of the way through the movie on, on this, and so you get yeah. this long sequence of all this, and then Kion's starting to, to deal with all this, understanding it all. Um, and getting all this crazy animation of, of the, um, the, the Christmas packages, you know, exploding out and him getting, you know, <laughs> thrown out of the, the, the building. Yeah, blown out the window. Yeah. Um, and then again, we, we get kind of this, and then he gets his whole big cathartic moment of him talking to himself and realizing what's going on <sighs> and, and pushing back against his, um, uh, himself, um, if you will. And then leaving behind that Yuki very symbolically. Um, and driving and, and, and going forth. And so that when we get to that moment, we've had our catharsis. We've had our emotional journey. Two and, hours later. Yeah. <laughs> and then Ryoko stabs him out of nowhere. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, you go? You know? <laughs> it's, it's just a, a great way of ratcheting the tension up and down and up and down in a way that you, yeah. you, you, know, you don't expect sort of from a, a classic film structure. Yeah, I thought it was going to turn out completely different. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to use the gun. Yeah, yeah. I, I initially, when I had seen it, I th- I thought he was going to. How how is he going to convince Yuki that it's okay? That things are going to be fine. Don't She's worry, scared. What's it going on? Good. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> in comes the knife to the back. I'm like, what the hell happened, <laughs> dude? <laughs> and the look and, on her face. <laughs> and and, that's, and and here is where again you get that 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 wonderful connection where. This is what the audience wanted Ryoko to be like. Yeah. Every time she shows up, we're waiting for the <laughs> psychotic, you know, Mirai Niki moment. Yeah. And we're like, oh no, that's not what she is. That, that's not what we're getting in the movie. She's then, nope, different here we now. Go. She's different. We get it. We get it. You know. Yeah. The world's different. She's different. We're all good. Nope. In <laughs> um, that moment, um, where she and it, boy. Talk about creepy. Um, Nothing like being stabbed by a cute girl. Yes. <laughs> um, no, when she spins around, and I don't think I'll be able to get the, the exact moment. Um, and splatters Yuki. Splatters Yuki with the blood. You should know. Um, uh, yeah, that's the one. Right on the glasses. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's not a good moment. Um, and, and again, it gets back to the, to the fact that um, Yuki thinks she knows what she wants. Um, but there are unintended consequences of what she's doing, and that's, yeah. that's kind of it's one of the reasons why like this isn't really how it should be. Um, but go no. figure. Consequences for an enormous space time <laughs> quake. Hey, I would <laughs> never have imagined. Strange. Ripple, 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 right? ripple, ripple, ripple. Um, yeah. And it's one of the cool things about this movie is is again it's kind of you know it's one of the things I love about this franchise is how it is able to both be silly and goofy and ridiculous, but also kind of delve into these sci-fi topics and go like no like this this you know this does get really complicated really quickly and yes. this, you know, this this shouldn't make sense this shouldn't work well how about koizumi and and uh, haruhi when they're sitting talking with the kyon in the family yeah. restaurant mm-hmm. and koizumi's like you know there's two things that could have happened there's this line this line and you're here and you mm-hmm. just flipped into a parallel world mm-hmm. or there's this line with the wavy line and stuff, and it's like it turns out the wavy line one is what happens. Yeah, and it's just like, wait a minute, <laughs> how did he come up with yeah. that? Yeah, like, is it that interesting? Well, and it, it's one of the amazing things about the movie is that you know, um, um, one of the things that, that kind of surprised me when going in is that she raises her hand and rewrites the world. And there's no flash. No. There's no, you know, nothing happens. It's just, now the world's different. Well, there's a little bit of wind. Yeah. Just like, wind just the is, trees kind of sway a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Um, and I love that idea. And again, it's the idea that, you know, they're not being, you know, um, transported up and pocketed someplace else. It's just the world. And the world has just been reworked in ways. Yeah. Um, and, and there's no really like classic sci-fi shaft of light where you look out <laughs> at the city and you see the, <laughs> and then the world's different. Much well, less the classic, uh, you know, Daikon Four, you know, ever ex- you know the expanding the ball globe, of light, wall, right? Ball of light, exactly. The all Akira exploding Neo Tokyo. <laughs> right. You know, I think we like, were all oh. waiting for that, but no. Nope. Um, and it is indeed frightening the fact that 
you know, the 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 alien android Yuki can literally raise her hand and rewrite <laughs> existence. Yeah. Well, and, and like, and, wow, and, and, not even not even Asahina, you know, future <laughs> travel girl has those kind of powers. She knows what's going on, but she can't do really anything like that. No, and and, and so subtly, it could be yeah. happening all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, and she she says that at some point, and she said, you know. If you had tried to intervene beforehand, I would have just wiped your memories and rewritten the world if it didn't happen. And that could have happened before. Yeah. You have no way of knowing that I haven't actually done this. How a many times, times have I been written? written? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again, if, if Yuki said they've been through 15,000 cycles of summer. Yeah, I mean, she could keep rewriting all this stuff that Kyon has to remember for the next time that all this stuff happens. This could all be a process of how many cycles until Yuki gets it right and Ooh, Kyon yeah. doesn't interfere. Mm -hmm. Kyon accepts yeah. what's going on yeah. and Yuki gets it right. Mm -hmm. Then she gets yeah. to be with Kyon. Mm -hmm. ah, Absolutely. This could be another cycle. Yeah, it could. It could. And it's one of the reasons why, and again, I, I really appreciate that kind of the groundwork they lay is how uncomfortable Mikuru is around Nagato. Um, yeah. Which, is again, that's episode two of the original series. Like, there's very, like, as soon as she goes in, she's Nagato, she's like, mm, 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 you know? <laughs> and it's, as we see it here, it's because Nagato has absurd levels of powers. powers. Yeah. What well, was it, the sentient? Entity something or other. The, the data thought entity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that it's like obviously um, Asahina knows, you know, as future self, what that thing is possible of doing and channeling whatever power it has through Yuki. Yeah. And it's just like makes you really wonder what happens in the far distant future. Yeah. <laughs> like something well, terrible going on. <laughs> you know, um, at one point, and again, if Kion is sort of part of all this, at one point Kion does say, "What has caused this? Mm -hmm. um, is it something?" Is it the data thought entity, or is it some other enemy? Enemy. That's an interesting classification there. <laughs> yeah. Lump the data thought entity in with that. Mm. Yeah. Um, and and you know you can hint at that. I, one of the things I love about adult Asahina is how you get the hint that she's in some really deep stuff going on. Like there's all sorts of things going yeah. on that she's. Kind of, it's kind of weighing down on her shoulders, mm. because of her personality, she just doesn't let it show. Right. Um, but there's, there's, there's a lot out there. It's just that she. Well, like, like he said, know. is that isn't that class, uh, classified information? <laughs> then she's like, yeah. well, in this circumstances, it's, I think that we could slide a little on that. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we, you know, we we, uh, you know, we get our ending uh, with. Uh, with never thought I would, <laughs> I, I wanted to see Haruhi um, in a sleeping bag hopping around like a worm, <laughs> but I did. Um, yeah. That was a, a wonderful little moment and a wonderful reveal. I you know and again, this is Kyo's yes. mission, you know, showing off a little bit where they keep changing the camera angle in that scene. They show you every corner of that room. <laughs> before finally revealing well that was the fun part like koizumi is just he does he's just points <laughs> yes <laughs> points down and it's just like uh wow nice reveal because yep. <laughs> none of us had a clue that haruhi was like stuck there next to the wall i was wondering why there were three <clears throat> apples so, yeah why, why is he gonna uh -huh. eat all those uh, why is he killing three well it's a it's a very <laughs> i hate to spoil it for you guys it's a smurf res reference Oh, Three apples high. It's but you wouldn't right, understand. Right, it's right, a, okay. totally yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. It all makes sense now. It's all comes together. It's about the Smurfs. Yeah. This whole thing's about Smurfs. It's always all about Smurfs, exactly. Uh, um, but only one Smurf. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Not gonna. No, okay. Yeah. 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 Moving on. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, and and Haruhi has, and, and again. I, I love all the little details about this, about how, you know, she's bouncing around and then she kept kind of kicking the, the, the sleeping bag off her leg because it won't, won't stay there. I like and, the gentle whoosh in the hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's, it's, I think it's, it's Kyoani um, giving us that, that little bit of, of relief. Um, right. Of now things are back to normal. Now folks are kind of doing their thing. We, we get a domestic scene, if you will. Yes. With all these characters. Well, um, and certainly this, the you know, the driving 
issue here has been Khan's search for Haruhi and yeah. search for the normal, restoration of the normal. Mm -hmm. And that little brushing her bangs aside is that, like, ship, please? Yeah. <laughs> ship? Mm -hmm. Just say, I love you, Haruhi. That's mm -hmm. all Come on, Absolutely. do it. Um, and you're absolutely right. It, it, it gets to the fact where, you know, and like I say, I, I think, you know, um, I remember a, a Yuki fan, um, but Kion clearly has such deep affection for yeah. Harvey. Another example of anime, which I think is, is kind of, might seem odd, um, is Ranma and Akane in Ranma One Half. Hmm. Um, okay. The two of them bicker constantly. <laughs> yes. But if one of them, one of the other gets separated, oh. They're going to find each, each other, other, and they're, they're going to rescue each other, and there, there, there is a fundamental, you know, connection. relationship there. Connection there, right. absolutely. And you very much feel that in, in this. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kion has gone through a lot of crap to get to this point. <laughs> exactly, yeah. When again, you know, like we said, starting out, the easiest thing to do was to accept what the normal was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. to, yeah, okay, get a little freaked out, a little whacked out, mm -hmm. find Haruhi, mm -hmm. and then say... Cool. Right. Cool. We're good. We're good. <laughs> nothing's going to end. Nothing's going to be crazy. We're all good. And it's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> you drove forward to find the real Haruhi again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just, you know. Her waking um, up is <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> fantastic animation. Um, and as Josie pointed out, this is, um, you know, still relatively early in Kiwani's ascendancy, so to speak. Um, you know, QAnnie is, is at this point sort of starting to really ride high on all other successes. I yep. think this is their first movie, if I recall correctly. Um, um, wow. Yeah, because um, the Cannes movie didn't come out for another year or two, I think. Um, and, uh, and, and in fairness, you can kind of see it, right? Like, like this is a, right. you know, um, really cool, really interesting film. But right. it's, it doesn't have a kind of the scale of the spectacle of a lot of the, the other films. Um, well, I mean, even Haruhi, the the, the series, it's mm -hmm. it lit a fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely. That people were all over it, and its animation quality as a series was uh, was better than I would have expected for a kind of dippy rom com kind sure, of thing. Yeah. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to be. Yeah, where it was like, no, you guys actually were committing a lot to getting this in the right shape and form mm -hmm. that then carries through into this film. That the film is done really, really well. Mm -hmm. You know, just him, Kion, Kion walking along with his jacket on and his muffler. Mm -hmm. it's like, there's just a ton of detail in just his layout yeah. physically moving. Uh, what you had pointed out with, you know, crazy stabby lady <laughs> coming into the classroom. There's that deep focus on her slippers walking mm, yeah. there. Yeah. The point where Kion is walking, you see his feet walking where it's like there's a lot of detail orientation on this yeah. and a lot of body movement and physicality to it that's really well done yeah absolutely. very enjoyable to watch it absolutely um i mentioned this before um when talking about the original series to be clear this is this is one of the reasons why kyo annie kind of is what kyo annie is um when they came out with the um dvd release they went back in and rewatch the series to fix animation mistakes. Mm -hmm. And they did things like there is a shot from, I think, episode uh, yeah. two, where you see wow. the outside of the school building um, okay. after they, they've been inside. And um, Haruhi has opened the windows and talked whatever, and then he cuts to the outside. Turns out, in that painting of the outside, the space where the SOS brigade is the window is closed. In their internal map of where all the things, they painted it, and there's just some windows are open, some windows are closed. And they, they, they that so for the DVD, they went back in and they repainted it so that when they cut to the outside, wow. the correct, correct window, window was, was open. painted open. Like, wow. Who's going to notice that? Now that's a very fine detail. Uh, who's going to notice that? About a billion <laughs> super nerds. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, um, but they, you know, they, they, they put in the work to, to make sure that's, yeah. that, that's where. The other thing I want to point out while we're talking about that is the, uh, the color scheme. Um, yes. Because it is this very drab winter color. Yeah. Um, all throughout the movie and, again, kind of sympathetic color to, uh, to Kion's feelings. Um, but they, they maintain this, this very um, muted color palette 
um, throughout this the beginning of the movie, and it's not just, um, you know, it's not just these are the colors they chose for the movie because when you get to the end, you know, it, all the all the brightness is back. You know, the, the whole right. hospital scene is much warmer. They're doing all that because that is what's happened, right? He's come back from his sort of emotional thing, mm. right? Um, endless eight. Yeah, and so, sorry, you're absolutely right. Endless eight. So um, um, let's let's mention that real quick. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. And, and to be clear, I love the MS8. I think it's a brilliant artistic choice. Oh, um, yeah. It's a, it's a choice. It, it, it's a choice. <laughs> um, for those not familiar, and I, apologies for, again for kind of a spoiler, um, I will say the plot is that the characters are um, experiencing the same week over and over. Um, Kyoto Animation did not just, you know, take all those scenes and then show them again. Those are all reanimated. Like you're seeing the same sequence Just over and over. The same scene, same dialogue, characters are wearing different shirts, they're wearing different shoes, all yeah. these various things. Not are, recycled. Not recycled at all, nope. different camera Lots angles. They really did all they that. They didn't stuff. Scooby-Doo the hell out of it. Not at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, I mean, I, and again, you, you, we've spoke about this before, yeah. and, and you're, the artistic commitment to it is certainly there but man i remember sitting and watching that at lunch mm -hmm. like getting ready to go to work and being like okay i get through it twice and i'm like okay the third time now we're moving more onto the plot i'm like third time's like the other two like <laughs> <laughs> and by the time i get the fifth one i'm like you are i'm gonna mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and, 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 so no, i can appreciate and, the artistic and, effort right, at the same time i'm like i want plot damn it well and that's <laughs> kind of well and okay we'll, we'll, we'll go down that road um it is my opinion <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that that is very much the statement they're making. It, it, mm -hmm. The endless eight is kind of a commentary on fandom, because fans claim, not us, <laughs> fans claim that they want more of a thing, and if you try to change anything, they scream and complain. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. If you try yeah. to go too far off the things, they're like, "Okay, you're gonna get." These characters having the fun summer adventure over and you get you sure you're just gonna get that you're gonna get God. plenty of it you're gonna get so much of that it's just gonna be that take your <laughs> fun <laughs> summer and pack your down your throat <laughs> oh boy and, and I think that was kind of the point is that it's like why would you complain you know quote unquote why are you <laughs> complaining it's cute Haruhi Suzumiya stuff. They're having their uh, adventures. Right? Just the same adventure. Just the same adventure over and over. Which is kind of what everyone kind of wants out of season two of any given show. Is the same, you know, give us that, but just just more just, of it, just, just, just more of it exactly the same. Instead of the so, beach episode is number thirteen. Number twenty six, make it the mountain episode. There we go. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, like, oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> this formula applied to the second season. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, okay. Yeah, I get you. I get you on that. Um but yeah, so um, Christmas movie. So yeah, so and, and not really a Christmas movie. I would, I would argue. Um, but That's yeah, Christmas. Only. Yeah, it, it is set around Christmas, but not really a Christmas movie. I would, I would argue. Um, they didn't have any Kentucky Fried. I know chicken. Yeah. yeah, which I was hoping to see and go. Oh, see, yeah. look, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, yeah. it's it, KFC wouldn't spit up the money for a sponsorship, so uh, out the door uh, they that's went. Probably what that is. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Um, and so you get something in. I want to talk a, uh, a quick moment, um, just to wrap up, about the post credit scene. Oh, yeah. Because I'm not sure what the heck is going on in this people scene, get up honestly. and walk out of a movie once credits start rolling. Yeah. Like, I try and stick around now because uh, uh, films have been poking in uh, outtakes and... Yeah. Uh, you know, all Blooper reels things. and some content. So you yeah. get your content, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, all yeah. sorts of great stuff. And yeah. uh, we got to the credits, and we see a library. Particularly, we see kind of the children's section of the library. We see Yuki reading. We see her looking at two little kids interacting at a computer. Um, they don't. They're certainly not Kyo's little sister. And then uh, uh, Yuki looks at us, stares at the camera, shows us her book. 
you know? And then we... Which if, if I could tell what the book was, yeah, I, that um, probably would have been yes. more helpful. Um, which, which I'm sure has a, you know, means something, is, you know, is, is relevant to something. Advanced quantum mechanics? It could be. It could be. Um, and to certainly serve the... mankind. Yeah. No. <laughs> no! It's a menu! No! no. Um, See, um, I thought that was a... Like, looking at the two kids, I'm like, is this a young Kion and a, lo- a young Asahina? That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, we've got dark-haired kid, we've got Asahina-colored-haired kid. Mm-hmm. She has been here all this time. Mm. It, yeah, and Yuki is, like, the oh. same age when they're all, like, five. Oh. <laughs> oh she like, just doesn't um, age. Yeah. yeah. Or she moves in time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that's... I was, I was thinking, as an android, she doesn't have to age. Right. Yeah. But it's... You know what I mean? It makes it kind of hard for her. Like, does she go to high school continuously? And the teachers are just like, why are you always in class one? What the hell? How are you doing this? But, but they've established in the show, which granted, you know, who knows? It's like Doctor Who. Um, yeah. Um, that um, she was sent here in response to the middle school incident with Harley. So she was sent here three years ago from the timeline of the, of the series. She wouldn't have been here, you know, 10 years ago. Before that event happened, presumably. Presumably. Um, unless. But who could those characters be? Or, you know? And like, I should point out, it could be that she was sent here to 10 years ago in a result, you know, as a result of that incident, and then was sent back in time further to observe in the future. It's possible. That but red right. hair with the yellow bows. I kind it, of. It, it does look Or do you like, think that's a, a, a Harley he with lighter colored hair? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, um, it looks an awful lot much like. Asahina's hair. It does. I, it, it definitely looks like Asahina's hair, but that doesn't look like any of the boys I, I know in the show. No. Except yeah. maybe Kanazaki. Um, I forget his name, but you know, the, the Well, don't look at guy. any of my junior high school yeah. yearbook mm. pictures because I don't look anything like that. That's I true. never did. That's true. <laughs> I should right. listen to the audio closer and see who the voice actor is. Hmm? Um, that probably gives us the clue. Um, although sometimes they, they change that around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting scene. Um, I yeah. don't know what they're hinting at there. Um, Which, I mean, it's easily possible that Yuki time-quaking, rewriting the entirety of existence, Mm -hmm. it is easily possible that Yuki, by her own aberration, Mm -hmm. has traveled further back Mm -hmm. to observe younger younger versions of people to sort of build the database on Mm -hmm. You know, what were their experiences and what were they doing in these places yeah. and times? Yeah. Because, then, again, think about a larger data set. If, if this is, if Kion has to remember things to repeat this another time, uh, so he yeah. has to remember stuff, if Yuki can go back to a, a critical point mm-hmm. and establish what reality would look like for Kion uh, and for all of them, mm-hmm. she could rewrite that reality the next loop. True. And might even be able to re- re- rewrite that reality at that point when they're that young, where they I won't ask these questions. Just realize what's going on. I think. Ooh. Mikuru is from the future. Right. This is her now. Hmm. Right. She okay. she could be six years old right now. She will eventually grow up to be you know whatever. Future and traveler. Back in time. Right. Yuki is now observing Asahina. To stop her? Possibly. To observe her, to do something. Well, if you think about the interaction between Asahina in her high school format and yeah. adult Asahina, that is a key function of how the rewrite gets rewritten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if Yuki is observing Asahina in the yeah. past yeah. and can influence how she ends up going forward mm-hmm. that could yeah. stop what occurs with rewriting the rewrite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm thinking of this like a, a, a linear tape with read heads on it and write heads on it mm-hmm. and erase heads. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Is... This one's reading it. Okay. That one's got to erase it and that one's got to rewrite it. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's not easy. I'm trying to remember. Um, um, Tanagawa. I am amazed that Tanagawa has kept all of these things 
woven together over the course of these bike novels. Um, it's really impressive. Yeah. Um, and it should be pointed out, Disappearance is, I think, novel three. Hmm. Um, they actually plucked it out of the, 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 the stories that were under consideration for the TV series. They're like, this is such a perfect self-contained story. If we're ever going to do a movie, like, let's just not do, you know, let's, let's not do this as part of the, the, the TV series. Okay. Um, so this comes across, come, comes along fairly early in the light novel series. Um, wow. So this could wow. be, you know, woven in in a different way. So, I since I really like those, uh, yeah. the, I've only watched the anime. I haven't read yeah. any of the manga. Mm -hmm. yeah. would, you re uh, would you recommend the manga, the light novel? I have, I have not read any of the light novels yet. Um, and they're originally just the novels. Yuki, just the Yuki stuff. Yeah, 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 just the Yuki uh, spinoff, which yeah, again is, is a lot of fun. Um, I, I will. I mean, you do get sort of weird visuals like this for folks like that. Like, oh. sure, yeah, that, that's how it is in that universe. Like, Damn. it's just kind of odd. Um, I will also say that there. Oh, are... they're such good friends. Let me show you my knife collection. <laughs> um, Here we you know, go. You also get like sweet stuff like that. Where right? there's a the two of them going out, going out. Um, I, I will say, if you do want to get into this, because I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, um, it, there is some dramatic stuff later on. Um, there is some stuff where I was like, oh, you know. Um, uh, but it does come to a, a satisfying conclusion. I, I where don't. Yuki and Haruhi get in a, like, a fight. <laughs> no. <laughs> sh sh should I tell you? No, 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 no. I, I have to leave the room. Spoilers, spoilers. Tell me later. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I, I can drop hints. Um, but, yeah, so that's Disappearance of Haruhi Kuzumiya. Um, any final thoughts? I'm amazed that you liked it more a third time. Because oh, yeah. the second time through, I just had a hard time knowing where it was going to go. I had forgotten parts of where it went, but knowing where it was going, two hours and 41 minutes and change. <laughs> And like I said, just having, you know, the post-COVID vaccine aches and pains where I'm like, oh, God, I got to get up. <laughs> I, gotta, sure. I can't sit here for two hours. I got to get up. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and it's like, I, you know, I got more in discussing it with, mm. with you guys. I got more out of it than I had I when like... I first saw it completely. Gosh, I don't even. I think I had been to Star City and, and seen your panels, Brent, but oh, okay. I, we were not like, we hadn't oh, wow. like yeah. gotten yeah, in well. discussing things yet. So I watched Haruhi with absolutely no community, anything, which is the way it should be in my opinion. Right. <laughs> but I mean, it also watching that film, I didn't get as much out of it oh, because yeah, I yeah. really literally had no one to discuss it with. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just like, mm. now I'm getting a lot more flesh on that where it's like, Oh, so the things that I was just like, okay, mm, yeah, 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 timing, they will move along. It's like, now this makes a lot more sense. Like I hadn't even, considered the notion of his bringing up that oh i gotta remember to yell out yeah john smith he's gonna shake the world mm -hmm. it's like i didn't even remember that part i'm like oh my gosh he's remembering that he has to remember for the next time i'm yeah. like that didn't even occur to me mm -hmm. I'm like oh everything's fixed like oh no it's not the endless eight taught us that you could go through this so many times yeah. I'm like well oh, we, we know already you know um um that he meets himself at least twice. You know, Kion does. <laughs> it's like, that's, yeah. Uh, this, is, this is complicated. Um, I want to try yeah. that someday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> meet you. yourself it's me. twice? It's, it's you, it's me. <laughs> I, I just want to reach you. out and touch fingers and watch the universe end. <laughs> yeah, universe. Then, yeah, yeah. Boom! <laughs> Explode in a, in a, a flurry Quantum. of confetti and, and exactly. the nullification of my existence. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> Cool, then we will be right back um, to talk about anime news and other things along those lines. Sweet. And um, we will um, see you in just a few minutes. <laughs> 